<laughs> I know, right? This is the craziest thing I ever saw. Wow, I'm real happy I stuck around for that story. Turtle with a hat. Anyway, boys, I gotta skedaddle on out of here, so I will catch you next time. Great game, Seth. Yeah, I got a jet too, guys. Me too. I'll see you guys next session. You guys take care. I had a lot of fun. Hey, Seth. Oh, hey, Kevin. I thought you were leaving. I wanted to talk to you alone. I uh, got a problem. What's up? It's the guys. It's like they don't even notice I'm in the room with them. How so? Oh, they steamroll over me and they never listen to any of my plans. You know, Mike, you know, he got that plus three chain mail and Dweeble's got that flying short sword. All I got was a crappy cloak. It's like they hoard all the best stuff and they don't let me have none of it. And it's, uh, it's kind of ruining my fun. I'm sorry, man. I mean, maybe they don't realize that you feel that way. I was hoping you could talk to them for me and just, uh, just let them know how I feel. Sure, man, I can do that for you. Hey guys, before Kevin gets here, I want to let you know that he's feeling a bit left out of the game. Left out? How's he figure that? He says he feels like you guys are steamrolling over him, or not listening to any of his plans, and acting like he's not even here at all. That's because he doesn't say anything helpful. Yeah, after 10 minutes of us discussing how we were supposed to get in through those fortifications, he just kind of casually throws out, why don't we climb over it, like we hadn't already discussed that one to death and ruled it out. But he didn't offer anything new to that entire conversation. Maybe if engaged in the conversation earlier, he'd have known that. Was he just not listening the entire time we were planning that out? I don't know, guys. All I know is that he said that he felt like you really weren't listening to him. Uh, who the hell is Kevin? Kevin, man, he's been with us for like three years now. He's got the big old hair, normally sits between us. Are you guys screwing with me? Also, Kevin says that he feels like you guys are hoarding all the good treasure. Wait, what? He can't even use most of that stuff, but our characters can. That's why I got most of the stuff in the Wizard's Tower adventure, but now it's our turn to get something and he's the one that feels robbed? Can you remind him about those spell scrolls and that magical staff that he got? Look, I'm just saying that's how he feels. Well, he should have told us all this back when we were splitting up the treasure. And why are you the one telling us this? He asked me to talk to you guys about it. Why? He not want to talk to us no more? He don't respect us enough just to tell us himself? Guys, I don't know. He just asked that I kind of tell you how he feels. Seriously, who the hell is Kevin? Hello Internet, it's Seth Skorakowski, and today I want to talk about communication within your gaming group. Specifically about the importance of players, all the players, and by that I'm including game masters as well, being able to talk freely and open with one another. One of the things that a lot of game masters have happened to them, and has certainly happened to me, is a player in the group has some issue or some complaint with another player, but instead of, you know, talking it out with each other, they instead then pass those complaints off to the game master in order to handle those complaints on behalf of the player who has some issue. Now, when talking with your group or any other personal issues like that, uh, of course this is always going to be case by case, and so you should always use your best judgment and, you know, taking any advice on this, and uh, nobody knows the specifics of your particular gaming group but you and your particular gaming group. And this video isn't about cases of hostility where one player feels unsafe or is being harassed by another player or anything that's truly bad. This is about regular interpersonal issues like so-and-so never listens to my input or so-and-so does this annoying thing or so-and-so is hoarding all the cool items or isn't following our agreed upon plans or other issues like that. Confronting your peers can be difficult. No one wants to spoil their fun imagination time by confronting their friend with some sort of complaint or some criticism like that. And people can get themselves really you know, stressed out into knots over just thinking about trying to confront somebody over this. So some players, in order to avoid having that confrontation, just simply chicken out and charge their game master into doing that distasteful job for them. I think a lot of older gamers out there are going to just assume that this behavior is really reserved for young younger gamers, you know, middle school, maybe even high school, you know, the uh, more socially awkward than us mature adults. But in my experience, that's not the case. Uh, I have personally had and spoken with other game masters who have had uh, fully grown adults uh, still charge their game master and ask them to handle uh, any sort of player complaint with one another on their behalf. Unfortunately, if a game master does, you know, talk to one player on behalf of another player, that can now lead to several new and interesting problems. 
First, there's no real back and forth communication. It's the game master delivering a message, and the confronted party can't ask for elaboration or discuss it with this upset player. Most issues can be solved through discussion, but here we're not able to have it. Also, the players might not receive criticism as well if a third party, such as a game master, is brought in to deliver this complaint. Naturally, they can become defensive, feeling the issue has now become escalated or that they're being lectured to, and that could easily make them a lot less receptive to any criticism that they receive, or even reject that criticism and placed with anger. It also increases the separation between the players. They're not talking to each other. Now there's this intermediary wall between them, and now that is a precedent that they have this intermediary wall between them, so now we're even less likely to have open communication between these two people in the future. And the other players might not respect whoever escalated this by not voicing this complaint themselves, and now this feelings they can linger long after this original complaint might have been resolved. All of which can cause a group to suffer or even break apart. In that example video, there were two mistakes that the characters made. First was the player who was asking the game master to talk to the other players for him. The second was the game master for agreeing to do it. It took me a long time to admit my own mistakes as a game master whenever I agreed to talk to the group or another player on another player's behalf because they had uh, some sort of fear of confrontation. From my point of view, I thought I was helping everybody out. And I've always said that a game master's job is to provide a fun and a memorable experience for their players, or at least provide a setting where the players can make their own fun and memorable experiences themselves. And I thought by me helping them out with, you know, whatever this issue was, by expressing their complaints to one another, that I was doing that. But the truth was, is that I was really just making it worse for everybody. One of the mistakes that a lot of game masters can fall into, uh, one of the game master sins, if you will, is to stop thinking of your players as your peers and to begin thinking of them like their children, which is uh, just a terrible, terrible mistake to make. And like with a teacher and their own children, yes, we care about them, we want the best for them, but we still think of them like their kids. And one of the fastest ways to plant that seed into a game master's brain that their players are more like children is to ask the game master to handle your conflicts for you like a teacher dealing with immature children. Back in college, I had a player who called me out for because the fact I was beginning to think of my players like children, especially him. And it took me a while to admit that, yeah, he was, he was right about that. However, that was also the same player that on more than one occasion had asked me to help him uh, by talking to the other players and voicing his complaints on his behalf. Uh, these were all players that were friends outside the game. We all hung out with each other, but if there was any sort of conflict going on with inside the game, uh, that player was the first to come forward to ask me to uh, handle it for him. He just shirk it off on me, so naturally I started thinking of him almost like they were children. So I learned my lesson with that. Now, if I'm asked to, I will offer to assist or support the player if they want to have some sort of uh, complaint or voice some sort of you know issue that they're having with another player. Uh, I can be present for that discussion. Uh, maybe we can do it uh, before a game session or between the game sessions, but I will not handle that discussion for another player. So, players out there, if you do have issues with another player or with your game master, before you try to get somebody else to handle that for you, first determine why. Why should they do that instead of you? Now, maybe there is a perfectly legitimate reason why somebody else should handle that, such as uh, you don't feel safe because that of that other player, you feel threatened by them. Okay, yeah, sure, that is a very legitimate problem, and you do need to talk to somebody else about that. But at no time that I've been asked to, to handle some sort of issue between players has that been the case. It's always been some sort of you know interpersonal disagreement that's going on between them, and it's something where the, the players didn't feel any sort of actual threat with one another. Uh, it's just that they didn't want to be able to talk to each other about it because they didn't want to be uncomfortable, and it really was an issue that they should have just handled themselves. Now, Game Masters, if a player asks you to pass along some sort of complaint to the other players that are in the group, ask them why they can't just do that themselves. Make them tell you why they can't do that. And if there is no reason why, outside of they just want you to handle this for them, then charge that player with discussing that with the other player or with the other players. Again, you can offer to be present, you can assist them, but don't do this for them unless it's one of those cases that you determine that you actually need to do this for them. 
Another thing to remember is if a player is complaining to you about something that's going on inside the game or with another player, is to first determine if they're just simply venting. Venting is fine. We all need to do that from time to time, and there is no call to action by them venting. They just want a sympathetic ear and maybe organize their own feelings as they're sort of talking this out. However, if you misread that conversation and believe that there is a call to action on their part, uh, like they're asking you to involve yourself in this situation, and then you do involve yourself in the situation, well, you probably just made a bad situation a whole lot worse. Or if that player is asking you to act, you know, maybe they're, they're wanting you to do something about it and they think that you're getting that impression, but you don't get that impression, you just thought they were simply venting, and you don't act on that, now that player is going to be upset with you because you know, you know, they asked for your help and you didn't help them, and all of a sudden there's hurt feelings this other direction. So if you're not sure if a player is, is just simply venting to you, or if they're asking you to be involved in the situation, just simply ask them, are you going to mention this to them? Determine if they want an action to be made, and if they do, put it on them to make that action. I've brought up in multiple videos at this point how many issues around the gaming table can just simply be fixed through communication, and it's far more effective if we talk to each other like we're just peers. Game masters have an authority role within the game world itself, but that's the make-believe imagination land. That's their role inside the game, and outside of that they're just simply a peer just like everybody else. But often, both players and game masters can confuse that authority that they have with inside the game into believing that it's more than just that. A lot of conflicts can happen between a player and a game master if one or both of them believe that the game master is some sort of authority figure above everybody else. And having a game master become the group's disciplinarian only reinforces that mindset. And players are often much more receptive to the notion of getting criticism, uh, that they're doing something wrong, if that is brought to their attention by another player, somebody who is unquestioningly their own peer. So if another player says, dude, this thing that you're doing is causing some sort of issue for us and hurting our good time, that could be far more effective than if an authority figure comes in and says it, because then it feels like they're getting a lecture, that this is uh, somehow escalated to being something far beyond what it really should be. Most of us hate confronting our friends. I certainly do. But it's almost always better just to go ahead and rip that band-aid off early and get it out than it is to bottle up any complaints until they all build up into some much bigger issue that you know finally explodes and everything all comes pouring out at once, and now we're risking the possibility of the group or a friendship ending just because of that. And if your group does have problems, but not everybody in the group is able to voice those concerns with one another, and you're not all able to talk to one another about it, then that might be your biggest issue of them all. Hi, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews or how to's, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, gamers, Excelsior! I am so happy you finally saw Kevin in one of these videos. Can we expect to see more of him again in the future? Nah, we're never going to see Kevin again.